Hi, thanks for stopping by. Today I'm going to do a tutorial on how to create a paper mosaic inspired by Roman mosaics. We're going to have a quick look at this gorgeous mosaic. It was found, uncovered, uh, in Pompeii. Um, Pompeii was a town you might have heard of that was completely and utterly covered in ash and destroyed. All the people incinerated in 79 AD because of the eruption of Mount Vesuvius. And in the 1800s, uh, archaeologists and people rediscovered Pompeii and discovered gorgeous artworks like this. I'm going to talk through a little bit more in detail about this and explain how Romans made mosaics so you've got a better idea of what you're looking at. So this mosaic, as you can see, is teeming with sea life. It is quite Greek in style and it would have belonged on the floor of a very rich person's villa or mansion in Pompeii. And there's a reason why it belonged to a rich person. So if we zoom in much closer, you can see that this mosaic is made of hundreds and thousands of tiny little pieces. They are actually called tesserae. One of them is tessera. That's a Latin word. And the cost of getting someone to make an artisan, to make these hundreds of little tesserae would be enormous and therefore you could only be someone who was very wealthy like perhaps a senator or the ruling elite or a very rich Pompeian in order to afford an artisan to create this on your floor. The great thing about mosaics are that they're very easy to clean, they are durable, they last a long time but they're also a great way to show off how wealthy you are. So now let's use some of our knowledge about mosaics. And of course, we won't be creating ours in glass or stone or ceramic, we'll use paper, but we'll kind of use a similar idea and a few typically Roman themes, nautical themes, and create our own creative mosaic out of paper. So to start our mosaic, we'll need to prepare a few pieces of equipment and materials. First, you'll need a background paper. This is what you'll do the mosaic on. I've got an A4 piece of black paper. You could use white. I just prefer using the black. You'll also need strips of coloured paper. It doesn't really matter how long they are, but we will be cutting them up to make our little tesserae. Um, these are about a little wider than a centimetre, but again, remember that the smaller you do them, the longer it will take for you to create your mosaic. And the larger you do them, it's easier and quicker to create your mosaic, and it's also easier for smaller or younger hands, if this is something you're going to do with younger children. We're now going to create our tesserae. Remember those were the little squares that a mosaic is made of. So I'm going to take my first strip of colour and you'll notice I've got container so that I can organise my strips, my tesserae, into colours. So I'm going to cut, using my eye, squares. So I'm going to go through now and cut all the red squares and then all the other squares and put each lot into different compartment. I'll just show you now so you get a good idea of what I'm talking about. There we are. So fill each up each of your little containers up with all the different colours so you've got a selection of tesserae to use for your artwork. We're going to have a go drawing a creature called a hip-o-cam-po. 
Kos. There's it written in Greek. It's made up of two parts, hippos, which is Greek for horse, and kampos, which is a word for a sea monster, sea creature. And hippocampus is basically this mythological creature from ancient Greek and ancient Rome uh, that has the head of a horse, a neck and chest of a horse, some say the fins of a fish, it also has the front legs of a horse, and then the rest of its body is a fish. Ancient Greeks and Romans believed that this was the grown-up or the adult of a seahorse, the common seahorse that you and I know. And these creatures were said to be bringers of good luck. They helped sailors on the seas uh, escape attacks from sea monsters. They were gentle creatures and they were said to pull the chariot of the sea god known as either Poseidon in ancient Greek or uh, Neptune in Romans times. I'm now going to plan my drawing and I'm going to do it in white chalk so it's easier for you to see but it's probably better if you're doing this to use pencil. So in the middle I'm going to have my hippocampus I want a border, so that will be mosaic in as well, and I might do a few typical Roman waves. So let's get that hippocampus going first. I'm going to get that classic horse shaped head. Because this is a mosaic, when we do it, some of the detail will be lost, but as long as we get the main shapes, that's important. I'm going to curve round for his, his uh, neck, and then I'm going to curve in and round, in and round for his lovely chest. I'm going to carry on the body now and include a twist for the fishy tail. There's that twisted bit. And let's get the legs in next. So I'm going to do a straight line to a sort of knee. Curve it round slightly and down. And again, like I said, the details will be lost as long as we just get the main shapes. That's the important thing. So I'm curving out to the knee, down, out, down, in, and then a little curve inside and a lump. Maybe not as big as that. It's a bit tricky in chalk. Little lump at the back of the leg and then up and in. The chalk gives you a very general sort of shape of what you want. It's not great with detail but that, like I said, it doesn't matter because we're going to be doing this in mosaic and a lot of the detail will be lost. All right, let's do the leg that's in front and a little bit that comes over the body like this. I'm going to come out straight to the knee and curve. I'm going to curve down now. Curving down, out for the hoof, and back. In the little lump that we did before. Curve up, round, and in over the body. That's important because we want to show that muscle that happens over the body. Okay, we're going to finish off the under part of the body and the roll, this twist in its tail. 
So nice smooth line curving round all the way around this twist in the body. Make sure that that shape is really sort of streamlined like a fish. And if you're not happy with it, just make sure that you get it to the point because you want that lovely shape to, to, to come out in the mosaic. Still not happy with that. Let's keep trying until we get it. Curve that lovely little shape round. There we are, it's a bit better. The good thing about chalk is you can rub it off quite easily. Okay, and then I'm going to finish off that fishy tail. So I've got to follow it as if it's coming behind. So it's about there tail and ooh, back round as if it's following on from here back round and down there we are okay there's a bit of a lump there that I'm not too keen on so let's get rid of that lump and make it smoother there we are okay now we need to get the fish like fins so instead of a mane we're going to do more fish like fins like this I'm going to put a line I'm not sure yet how that will be done in mosaic but I'm sure we'll work it out I'm going to put that that line where the bone is, very thin bones inside of the fin to give it that fan shape. And again, I'm going to do another fin down here. They're supposed to be very efficient swimmers. So they'll need fins to glide through the water. There we are. Okay, I'm now going to do typical stylized waves that uh, was classic of Roman mosaics like that and a large one here and I've left that because there'll probably be a border all right there's our plan now it's time to mosaic it so I've got my palette of tesserae all those little cut squares of paper that I showed you earlier and I've got my glue for delicate parts of the picture or detailed parts I may not stick straight on I may arrange that a few bits first and then stick them on but for the border I'm going to go straight in with probably white and get the border in So there's a couple of things that I can say as tips for you. The first thing is, if you've decided to use white paper, you can use a black tesserae for the border. Also, if you have little gaps where your tesserae didn't fit, that's no problem. You just literally cut them according to the size that you need and glue them on in that space. So there's no problem at all with not having, you know, with having little gaps. You just cut shapes to fit into those gaps. Now, although you might be rearing to get started on your horse, my advice is to get used to cutting and shaping your tesserae. It's probably a good idea to start on another part first and as you get more experience and you get better then you can apply your skills to the horse so I'm going to do the same and I'm going to have a go at the waves first and then see how I get on with that so when you're mosaicing you want to avoid just using whole big squares so let's say for these waves I'm going to do them in the lighter blue I think 
but I don't want to just use big square squares. That's kind of very basic mosaic technique. What I want to do is cut them down a bit and shape them into that wave shape, not just use squares. So I'll show you what I mean now. I'm going to add a bit of glue first. And then um, I might try and move this so that it's easier for you to see. Here we are. Okay. So I'm going to focus on this wave. I want the light blue. I'm going to start at the top of the wave. And what you do is you put the tile in put the little tesserae in and you see, okay, we want a curve at the top with a point and I shape my tile and this is why mosaic takes so long because the mosaicist has to shape each little section so that it looks right and that's what can be so time consuming. So you can see there's a little bit there that got left out. So I'm going to cut a small bit now and stick that in. There we are. The other thing to remember is when you put the t little pieces down, you don't have to, you can leave a little gap between them. That's almost the beauty of mosaic is that it has little gaps between them. Um, and you can see the background coming through. Normally on, on a real mosaic, you would then apply like this soft white liquid, soft white substance called grout, and you would grout in between all the little tiny tiles. Obviously with paper, you don't have to do that. So you can leave little gaps between each tiny piece. So already, it's taken me a while to do that, but already I've got different shapes in that wave. In fact, I don't even like this big one. I might make it a bit smaller. I think I'm going to try and get that upward movement of the wave. So this is why mosaic takes a long time to complete. But it's worth it in the end. So I'm going to speed up the process now and show you how I'm going to complete the waves. If I hold the wave close to the camera, you can see how the wave is broken up into lots of little pieces that stick together. A useful tool is some, something pointy because your fingers will get sticky. You could use a kebab stick or a toothpick. Sometimes it's great just to prise off the bit of paper that's stuck to your finger to stick it into tiny little spaces like this. It takes time, but it is worth it. So I'm going to finish off these waves now. So I've started filling in the waves and also the background ocean. And I'm going to just show you a little section here so that I could talk you through any quick tips that I feel might be useful. So first, I don't glue all of it. I just glue the section I'm going to work on. So I'm going to work on this little bit. I might zoom in so that it's easy for you to see. Okay, so 
firstly, I want to think about straight lines on one side of each of the pieces. And I want to get that sort of point there. So I put my tesserae, my tessera against it and I just cut along where I think will give me the right shape. Nearly there, just need to curve this bit a bit more. There we are. Hmm. Sometimes you end up sticking pieces down and realizing they're not quite the right shape, but that's no problem as long as you're quick. You can pick them up and reshape them. There we are. That fits nicely. And I'm going to keep on doing that same kind of technique as I go up. There's often lots of little triangle pieces, so sometimes what I do is I cut a set of really thin triangles like this. And then you can just sort of squish them gently into those places or cut along them a little bit and then fit them in those slim little places that come up. So I'm going to continue now and fill all of the background in with this dark blue. Once you've done all the background, the next stage is to have a go at the actual body of our hippocampus. I've got a little plan in my head, so I know that mythology tells us that hippocampuses are said to have green used their skin and kind of golden, a golden mane. So I'm going to do this, the yellows and sort of orangey yellows for the mane. I'm going to do light green at the top with a slightly darker green underneath. And I might do this yellow and orangey yellow as well. And then we'll see when we get to the tail, maybe little specks of red here and there to make it a bit more exciting. So that's the next step. For the fins, I wanted them to have a spiky, sharp feel and to stick out into the ocean. So I stuck with mainly triangular shapes and kept it quite angular and spiky. I did this also so that it would contrast with the body because I decided I'm going to fill the body with quite curvy, almost water drop shapes of green. I also decided to keep the tail and the fins the same colour but just use slightly different shades of yellow to keep the consistency of the picture going. Here you can see those green water droplet shapes that I've used on the body of the hippocampus in green. I've used darker green for the underbelly and lighter green for the rest of the body. It's important to think about how you're going to make the main thing that you're mosaicing stand out. So I contrasted the sharp background with the curved shapes in the body so that the body of the hippocampus would really stand out. I'm just finishing off the hippocampus's face now and my few last tips are with a project like this it's all down to the size of the tesserae that you use. If you want this project to be quite a detailed, slow kind of turn on the music and zone out and just enjoy project, Use small tesserae. 
If you want this project to be quite big, you don't want it to take it to, it to take a long time, then you need to use larger tesserae. It could even be something that you do with friends or as a group. That could also be quite fun. But it does take time, but as you can see, it looks quite dramatic and really lovely. My final tip is when you're doing certain areas, don't be afraid to add tiny little pieces of other colours to make it more interesting. For example, the hippocampus's body is mixed with two greens, a lighter green and a darker green, and then little flecks of another colour here, bright red and it just makes it pop and it brings it out. It would have been nice now that I think back to maybe use a couple of different blues for the sea, for the waves, but I didn't have those colored paper. But that's just something to bear in mind as you go through doing your own mosaic. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and please do like and subscribe. Your support is greatly appreciated by me. Um, and if you're interested in drawing mythological creatures, I've actually done a, some other tutorials. Um, one, a serpopard, which is a beast that is part uh, leopard and part snake. And I've also done a tutorial on how to draw Horus the ancient Egyptian god. So I hope you enjoy it and maybe look at my other tutorials as well.